right, guys, listen, you're looking at the thumbnail, you're looking at the title of the video, you already know what time it is. It is time to get active. Got a response. So, guys, we must go over it. Shout out again to Mike Rashid. I did a video not too long ago. Let's just go down in there. I did a video not too long ago entitled Mike Rashid Disrespects the Red Pill After Attending the Fresh and Fit Podcast. Let's get active. Guys, I'll be honest. Most of the times I do videos, I don't expect the people that the video is about to see the video, but Mike saw the video. And he was actually down into my comment section, not replying to me, but replying to other people's comments in the comment section, what I thought was particularly interesting because I, I, I saw him down in it and I was thinking to myself, well, what does he think about the video? Because <laughs> he's just responding to other people. So he recently was back on his podcast and the topic of the video came up. So let's review that without further ado. I move how I want to move, and I answer to my own rules. Yeah. I create my own rules. They're mad at me for not subscribing to the rules that somebody else wrote. I don't care. Yeah. I don't even know it all, and yeah. I don't want to know. They, 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 they got a kick out of saying, well, he doesn't even know the whole thing about And I don't want to know. Right. I, I have no... I don't have enough space in my brain for that. I got other shit I'm trying to understand. I would challenge and somebody to say, okay, so okay, there's a sub, there's a subscribe notion to this indoctrinated way of thinking, and what the fuck does it get you? Here's um, it gets you an understanding of uh, the um, actual intentions of people behind the curtains. Um, it gets you an understanding of. Uh, the things that you should be focused on within your life in order to excel to be the best version of yourself. Um, it also gets you uh, the understanding of signing your name on the dotted line and what are all of the negative things and the impacts of if you sign your name on that marriage contract, knowing that there's a 50% divorce rate, 70% of which is initiated by women. And then what is generally the outcome of the person that is the breadwinner? Um, so I would say it's an enhance of knowledge. Um, it's an enhance of um, philosophy um, and as well as a enhance of manhood. OK, just 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 to name a few. But let's let's keep going. Here's the thing. All it does is make you mad. They're mad. All, no. These guys are mad. These guys in the comments are mad, right? Let me address that as well, uh, just briefly, because I talked about the red pill rage um, before. There's a lot of young men that would be mad without understanding the content of what red pill is. There's a lot of young men that are still mad anyway. Now, I will say that a lot of the content, there are men that use it to validate their own existence, or they look at content that um, points a finger at women contributing badly to society as a way to affirm their perception of women in general and in mass. And if they do not take a holistic view of the content that they're consuming, then they can stay within that rage and stay within there for a long period of time. Because I think like at the end of the day, having a platform that affirms uh, your thoughts, your experiences, can be as addicting as heroin, okay? And from a content creator's perspective, you know, depending upon how it is that we choose to deal with our platform, we can continue to hand out these medicine tablets day in and day out to continue to feed the masses. So I get what your point is, but I think that it's coming from much more of a perspective of just not understanding. And I think that's a, ba that's a basis of human evolution right? because we don't all have the opportunity to be able to understand it. So if we're hit by an opposing force, we're going to resist. And I think a component of that resisting happened to Mike. And I think as Melissa Ford is talking about this, it's happening to her as well. But besides her defending her, her co-host. But anyway, let's keep going. Mad at me and they're trying to belittle me. Their whole thing is understanding women. Because they have this women. idea about you. It's understanding women, right? Mm -hmm. And they're saying, I, I seen today, um, it was a brother, I can't remember the name of his uh, his podcast. Excuse me, my bro. It's all good, bro. I actually liked your podcast. It's a long, weird name, um, I know. Fuck, what's the name of his show? It was a black kid. And, you know, he just spoke about it. 
And it was a little clickbaity. It seemed like we were going at it because the picture looked all crazy and shit. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. he was very reasonable called a great in the assessment mm-hmm. of a video that Sean and I did talking about red pill, what women really like, I whatever. Saw that too. Yep. So, but the comments was just silly, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like these guys in the comments, they're talking about, well, red pill is all about understanding what women want. Now, one thing the guy said, and then they all adopted what he said, they said, well, Mike, you never have problems with girls, but look at you, like you're a genetic specimen, you're successful, yada, yada, yada. I'm like, hold, hold, hold tight, hold the phone real quick. I was skinny as shit growing up. Mm-hmm. My nickname was Skinny, right? Mm-hmm. Me too. I was, one, I left high school at 130, right? Mm-hmm. I left um, at 150. When I was about, I stopped fighting for the first time, I think I was 23, I was 158 pounds, mm-hmm. right? I didn't even get close to 200 pounds until I was 31, 32. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, wow. So I was a thin guy all my life, right? Yeah. But my confidence was this big, right? And I didn't have money all my life. And they also said, you know, he, he, he's a good looking guy with a great physique and he makes millions of dollars off of that. Yeah, like, like, stop, no. I make money with this right here. There's plenty of people in my industry that look better than me, mm-hmm. more physically attractive than me, better physiques, all of that. They don't make any money and mm-hmm. they're trying, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Plenty of guys swole all of that. Don't they can't get a girl mm-hmm. to save their lives? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and I made money before this. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I've always put myself in a position of leadership with this. Mm-hmm. Mm. It has nothing to do with how I look. Now, mm-hmm. how I look. Let's talk about that. So, j- j- gotta- just real quick. So, um, v- very fair points, brother. So, here's the thing: is that like. Um, so he was talking about his size, and I did a quick Google search just to make sure how tall that he is. That came up was 5'11". This was on Google. I'm not sure how <laughs> fair that is, uh, but it says 5'11". So leaving high school at about 5'11", 130, that is really skinny. I left high school at about 150, 155 pounds, but I left at about 6'1", 6'2". Similar to you, I was always labeled skinny. I hated being labeled skinny, so I made sure that you know when I got into a place where I can work out the way that I needed to work out, I learned everything that I could to become the best body version of myself. But what I thought was really important of what he was talking about right here is that he stuck on this. And I love that he said that and brought that up because, you know, previous to this, I wasn't, you know, you look at him and you assume he looked like that his entire life. But what he's saying that is that he differentiated himself by using key things within his personality to become the best, the brightest, the strongest, or what have you, and leverage those things to eke out the competition over time from a leadership perspective. Now, again, we're tossing the red pill stuff to the side for a quick second. And I appreciate that message because that's an important message. Even within myself, I say, you know, if I look back on my very short YouTube stint and career, like what are the components that I have been utilizing to leverage to get farther into my future, right? Farther down this roadway in this path. And I'd give you the same answer as well. It is consistent honing, consistent discipline, consistent learning that it helps me excel to the next stage. But let's get back to his thoughts real quick because I want to hear more before I give you the rest of my thoughts. To boxing at an early age, I wanted to be strong. I wanted to be a capable man, right? Um, and as I got older and older, I just wanted to always be capable and able to protect and yada, 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 all of that shit, right? So training and the way I look from training and the confidence that I carry from training and my self-estimation is high, all of that shit, because of things that I'm doing to qualify myself to be a dope ass man for a woman, mm-hmm. right? These are not, I wasn't born with these attributes. These are decisions that I made, mm-hmm. right, in my life mm-hmm. to qualify myself to be that motherfucker. What's your- I, I, okay. Um, uh, what I thought was interesting that he said that I think he corrected uh, in the future is that he said to qualify himself for a woman. I thought that was interesting because to hear all the things that he put himself through, right, to know how he's grown as an individual, right, like as a person, to know that he's done combat sports to that degree. And I think he's a boxer right now. And by the way, like, you know, if I ever have sons, that's the first thing that I'm going to make sure that they get into long and often. I, I did martial arts as a kid as well. And, I, and, and there's nothing like the... Um, pure discipline that is within your soul and your spirit, like to understand how to push yourself to the brink and back again 
nothing more. I don't think there's no other sport that does it like combat sports. Not football, not basketball. And I say that because those are team sports. But one-on-one, mano y mano, there's nothing like combat sports to really hone your mind at what it takes to be successful with something. But what I found interesting is that he said that he did all these things to qualify himself for a woman. And that surprised me. He then corrected it later and then said uh, uh, qualified him to be a leader. But I tell you guys all day is do not do things for women. Okay? That's just the icing on the cake. Okay, after you work in and develop yourself into the leader that you claim that you want to be the best at what it is that you do, the best in your industry, the best in your school, do it for you. We're talking. Okay, go ahead. So these guys, they got to understand. They're you're, not going you're to. You're coming at this me. Is, this is, this is they're the They're coming issue. at me. They're saying it's not fair. You're this is it. No, no, this is the issue. You're trying to make logic out of crazy. That's, that's your problem what? right now is you're talking about. I'm trying to save a couple people. Yeah. Stop it. I'm trying to give... Stop no, it. No, 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 no. I'm trying to give perspective. And the perspective is this. I'm black, right? Mm-hmm. I wasn't born with no fucking silver spoon. I was born in a gutter in mm-hmm. Brooklyn when Brooklyn was real Brooklyn. Rats bigger than cats. That's where I come from. Mm-hmm. The best style. Anybody from Brooklyn know, know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Cocaine 80s, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I'm from that shit, yeah. right? My house that I lived in corrupted our whole block, mm-hmm. right? Like, my life was a movie, a bad movie growing up, <laughs> a horrible movie. Right. But guess what? I'm still here, right? Yes. So, so what I'm saying, though, is this. Instead of looking at somebody like me, oh, well, you're just privileged or you're lucky. Like, no, motherfucker. I work my ass off for everything that I got, and I'm still planting seeds. Still, right? Do the same fucking thing. Don't, don't come at somebody like me, oh, you only got girls because, okay, yeah, that's why I got girls. But listen, there's fat, because one guy was like, well, there's plenty of guys with nice personalities that don't have the looks that people are overlooking. If he was rich, he'd have all the bitches. There's plenty of unattractive motherfuckers with the bag that that's gets what they true. want. That's fucking that's true. A, that's, that's a real, yeah. real vibe. That's true. So if you don't have the looks, get the money yeah. and you got the girl. Yeah, that's There's true. no fucking excuse. Your shortcomings with women is because of you, what? not because of women. <laughs> You know, it's so okay. Uh, let, let's address a couple of those points. Uh, one of the things that he said is that because of his current aesthetics is the reason why he doesn't get it. And I'd argue like this is that like, yeah, but that's still true, though, to a degree. And it just depends. Again, I don't know wh- what he said on the Fresh and Fit podcast or what have you. However, uh, where you are genetically right now does shield you from what the average man deals with. OK, it shields you. I'd love to know more about how he conducted himself when he was coming out of high school, 130 pounds, okay? Because maybe, because here's the thing, there's those of us that get red-pilled without looking out content on the internet. So like for me, for example, I had a situation or two or three that happened to me in my early 20s, which put me on a path in a road like you, my G. You understand what I'm saying? So My path didn't involve the aesthetics of my body, although I love to work out, and involved working on this wholly and truly within white collar sector. So I naturally came across it. I'd argue that you naturally came across it as well. It just manifested itself differently. I think that like what happened is, is that he just put the cart before the horse. He worked on himself. He worked on his body with his discipline and created a path for himself that has been extremely lucrative, right? So now he doesn't have to come about the same situations within life with the modern woman as the average dude, the average modern dude. He doesn't see it like that because he doesn't need to because now he's ascended to a place where he is now a valuable dude. He is a high value dude. But I absolutely agree with him when he says that every chick that you lost was because of you. I absolutely believe that. Because at the end of the day, you now have the information to understand how the modern woman acts, how they will treat you, strategies and perspectives in order to increase the likelihood of success. But at the end of the day, if you continue to choose women that are out your league, if you continue to choose women that are toxic in nature, and you're getting butt hurt and upset about that, well, that's nobody else's fault but you. I also want to just Melissa Ford talking about because they're all crazy. And again, I think that she's just hearing her co-host talk about it. She hasn't done research into it and probably will never do research into it. But oftentimes you hear this perspective that comes from women as if to say, if 
anything doesn't boost up a woman, that it must be complete and utter bullshit. And oftentimes, they're not privy to the information over here going after topic of topic of complete and utter anarchy and out of controlledness, is that a word, within modern women today. But honestly, it makes sense knowing her past, knowing her history, knowing that she made money essentially from male gaze, right? The male simp dollar. It makes complete and utter sense that she wouldn't have empathy for the average modern man in understanding the struggles that they go through through this crazy world today. Guys, uh, that's my last of my comments. I wanted to make sure to go back in and talk about that. I appreciate his follow-up thoughts because my assumption was is that if you look at the young man, he looks like he's been like that his, his entire life. That's a small brother. That's a swole dude. You understand what I'm saying? So I appreciate, I appreciate him highlighting the grind that it took in order to become the person that he is today. All right? Questions, comments, concerns? Y'all already know what to do. Media over tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. Come, guys, feel free to hit me up. Got an Instagram as well, at Media Good Tutorials and Reviews. Feel free to go up there, follow your boy, send me more content. This was actually sent to me on my Discord server connected through my Patreon. Guys, if you want to become a part of the inner circle, link to my Patreon down in the description box down below. Click on that link, beam up, see all of the resources, all of the things that I offer in store to be a part of my community focused on increasing our value on this earth. Until next time, YouTube. Peace. Hey.